you go to this nice event and for inviting me to this wonderful workshop. And also, thanks for sticking around after a long day of the high uh, So, while the pure key high model is exactly solvable, now we have both of the ground state and exact uh, ground state and the legal properties. This is a um, um, this kind of exact property. Uh, this appears at the moment uh, very experimentally relevant for the basis to help the system. So in my talk, I want to discuss a very good technique that allows us to efficiently extract dynamical correlation functions, uh, such as the dynamical structure factor, uh, from microscopic antibodies. And this is a work done in collaboration with uh, uh, Matthias Wolke and Ruben Borisen, they are both uh, students in Dresden. So let me I'll start by motivating uh, briefly why we want to look at the dynamic structure factors if you like. So we the entire talk will be concerned with the dynamic structure factors of, of this form here, which uh, as we've already seen is relevant uh, um, when trying to understand illusion scattering data. And uh, I think one example where this uh, demonstrate very nicely how powerful this image is uh, it's shown here. Maybe this is for a, a certain compound that is uh, well described by one-dimensional um, one half Heisenberg chains. And what we see here is a comparison of the experimental data on the left and the theory data on the right. And there are two things I want to point out. First of all, there's a very good agreement, at least for the high energy part, between the experiment and the theory. This gives us some confidence that this Model description is actually the right one. And secondly, the, uh, um, this broad feature here is actually due to fractionization of spins, like one of the hallmarks of, uh, of spin labels. So, so, and seeing this kind of beautiful example for only, we wonder if this you know, can be transferred to higher dimensions or two dimensions. And again, we, including the high model and other cross systems, we actually uh, have several. Uh, can be material that there are neutral data which generically are characterized by a broad um, features um, and spectra. Uh, the question is like what exactly does it help? Because here in case you would like to directly compare it to, uh, to model systems in order to try to understand uh, these characteristic features. Very similar to what we discussed previously today. Uh, but the problem is that in order to extract these features of either we know the exact solutions, which we do for the purity type model, or we actually have some tools that we can use to do this calculation analytically or semi-analytically, like we can do a only system where we have been under solutions, generically we wouldn't have to solve a very complicated quantum many body problem. And numerically this is very difficult and uh, the, often the only way is to use exact calculation. But here I want to uh, show that using the so-called density matrix polarization group methods, we can actually go to rather large systems and get uh, basically numerically exact data for these rather large systems. And originally the DMIG method was uh, introduced uh, as a system, as a, as a method for studying um, the systems, the properties of one-dimensional um, systems where both ground state and uh, excitation can be obtained very efficiently. Basically, where exact calculation can go up to maybe 30 ish spins, with the achievement can look at chains of hundreds or even infinite number of spins. And more recently, it was uh, discussed that how this generally one key method can also be used to uh, study ground state properties of two dimensional systems. And the key idea here is that we take our two dimensional system, which could be honey pockets, and we wrap it on a cylinder. And by putting the two-dimensional system on the cylinder, uh, it basically becomes a one-D system, which we can see that we can, for example, enumerate our spins along this um, snake here. And by this, we can have that our two-dimensional system to a one-dimensional system with long-range interaction. And then we can use the algorithm uh, that is optimized for, for one-dimensional systems. Uh, the advantage is with this, we can look at systems that have uh, cylinders of circumference up to 12 sizes. And this is now quite quite large uh, compared to other peaks we have. 
And where is that? This has been successfully used to extract ground state properties. We recently introduced some tools that actually allow to uh, also study uh, dynamical properties of these long range, uh, long range systems. And uh, this is what I want to talk about maybe in the next uh, And I want to talk some, on some different aspects uh, of the dynamics of the key type. One of, so the first part, I want to briefly discuss the key type Heisenberg model, uh, and then I will discuss the key type model in the future. So let me now start with the key type Heisenberg model, which we've already seen several times. So we see here the Heisenberg, uh, the type Heisenberg model, a permanent drive is from angle alpha, um, and then we uh, have a, by now a kind of quite well-known phase diagram. And what we, what we do here is we have used now the standard GMG method to, to obtain the ground state phase diagram and we recover the, the um, known results. I don't want to comment here uh, on this phase diagram in a lot of detail, but there are two parts that we have, uh, where we have a part of this type spin liquid around the pure uh, um, underpermanent and permanent. Um, again, I don't want to comment too much on the ground state phase diagram, uh, but there's one very important detail I want to uh, discuss because what we are doing is taking our two dimensional system and put it on a cylinder. And there we can have certain uh, architects, the physics that we have to be quite careful about. And uh, to illustrate this, let us now uh, for a moment just think of a simple kind of free, free fermion system on a on a, on a cylinder. And uh, what, we, what we know is that if we put the system on a cylinder, which will be infinitely long, but has a finite circumference, then we know that we only have a, a, a continuum of allowed k points along the elongated direction, but discrete k points along the other direction. So if we now think of a, of a system that has Dirac cones, that could be, for example, just a, 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 just a graphene lattice, if we put it on a carbon non nanotube, we actually know that the, uh, uh, the properties of the system very strongly depend on the boundary condition. Because the carbon nanotube can actually be either a metal or an insulator, depending on how we put it on the cylinder. And the same thing is now also true for our uh, 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 entire spin liquid. It will only be gapped, it only has a, a, a gap at this point if we choose the correct boundary condition. But actually, for the type model, it's a bit more subtle than what we uh, are used to for the carbon nanotube, because the excitations that we have, the, uh, uh, the excitations that form the Dirac uh, cones, are actually Majorana fermions. These Majorana fermions, they can actually they feel an emergency two flux going through the cylinder, which means that for a given geometry of our cylinder, we actually have two sectors. The one sector, in one sector, the Majorana fermions feel an under very boundary condition, and the other sector, they feel very boundary condition. Which means it has a, uh, um, that there's a shift of these allowed k points, which means that if we choose a geometry where graphene, like we expect for sure to have the allowed k points, then we can only see these gapless points in one of the sectors, but another one will actually um, um, appear to be gapped. So when we want to see the correct Majorana uh, uh, you know, physics on a cylinder, we actually have to make sure that we are actually looking at the right setting. And in fact, this is not only important for the uh, type model, but also for other curative uh, gapless or Dirac um, spin liquids, particular for the Kagome Heisenberg model. If we look at, uh, at this model using these DMSG techniques, again, we have to be quite careful to choose the boundary conditions correctly so that we actually um, see the um, gap as possible. So, so this is all I want to say about the um, ground state phase diagram. So now we assume that we um, are able to get the um, ground state properly. We are now interested in the uh, excitation of the low energy excitation of the system. But then uh, uh, we want to look at the dynamic spin structure factor. The way that we obtain the uh, dynamic structure factor is that we uh, calculate the uh, dynamic correlations, C 
of x with t will be how a spin at position x uh, and uh, time t is correlated with the spin with, say, a uh, like spin operator acting at size 0 and time 0. And for this, we just calculate this expression. So we have the uh, first obtain the ground space using our standard uh, here machine technique. And then we give this ground space with some operator, which could be now any uh, spin operator, and then time you the state. And in fact, this perturbation that we act on, like this kind of perturbation to the ground state, is a very local uh, perturbation. And the fact that this is such a local perturbation means actually that the entanglement growth for the, uh, uh, the numerical effort will actually be uh, um, moderate, not too bad. So we can go to relatively long times. And the advantage of the higher model is now that we actually do have an exact solution, so we can actually benchmark our technique for using it in an unknown curve. So for this, what we are doing is we now uh, tune to the parameter in the highest point, find the ground state, get it with some S plus operator or the S C operator state, and then you have to evolve it in time. And here in this uh, inset, we see a comparison of the exact numerical data in red and the exact solution on a cylinder, and we find that they can be uh, perfect well. And the overall have also a very good agreement with the uh, real 2D physics. But this is actually for a point where we use anisotropic parameters such as the gap opens. Uh, if we go to the actual kind of isotropic higher point, we, uh, there's still an extremely good agreement between the uh, exact numerical data uh, or the numerical data on the cylinder and the exact solution on the cylinder. However, the finite cylinder effects are more pronounced. But the overall tolerance uh, features uh, come out quite well. So having now some confidence in this method, we then can go through this phase uh, diagram and go away from these exact exorbitant points. So for example, we can look at the uh, Heisenberg point in this model, where we have the pure underperformance Heisenberg model, and the still of the most the plots that we get. So we get, as we've seen before, we get now slices um, through the ruling zone, so we have now uh, uh, a continuum momentum distribution in one direction and discrete in the perpendicular uh, direction. And here we look at the uh, Heisenberg point, and we can compare to uh, um, linear spin wave and uh, um, higher order spin wave calculation. We can also move further away from this uh, isotopic point towards uh, the higher spin data, and we see that there are some emergent high energy features in the broad energy. We can also, you know, go, uh, go randomly along this phase diagram, and for example, we can go into this um, zigzag phase here, near the higher phase, and now uh, plot you know, cuts at constant energy. Right? So, so here at low energy, low energy, we see uh, these peaks from from the uh, circulating water, and as we go to higher energies, we see these uh, rather kind of broad. Features similar to what was shown in Johannes and Flores about this morning. Yeah. In fact, if we now compare the high energy uh, features that we obtain in the exact solution of the QT high model, we find that this looks quite bad. And moreover, we can then be more bold and try to uh, at least compare it to uh, experimental data, and we find that certain features are reproduced, for example, this uh, star shaped features and intermediate. Uh, Energy. Of course, as discussed in previous talks, there are this, uh, uh, probably probably several other terms are, are relevant to explain this experiment, and this simple high Heisenberg model is not sufficient. But still, it's nice to see that uh, we actually do see these features in the uh, terms. So, with this, I want to. Uh, Move on to the, uh, the second example, and this is now the entire model in a magnetic field, which was also discussed already earlier today. So, first of all, if we start from the entire model, um, the, from the paramagnetic entire model that we had here, then there is a direct transition from the uh, uh, gap entire uh, spin liquid to a polarized phase. However, there is qualitatively different behavior in the, uh, the uh, unpermitted higher model, where we find a, uh, some 
intermediate phase before the system enters into the uh, gap uh, polarized phase. And again, this was uh, discussed uh, previously by Jewel and also by Indian and the group of uh, Simon Fritz. Um, it's also noticeable that the critical field at which this transition occurs, uh, in fact, where the system leaves these uh, gaps, uh, comes in with this uh, in order of magnitude larger than it is in the current interface. And moreover, the entanglement scale suggests that it could be a gap in space, however, the data is not sufficiently converged back to make definite statements about uh, whether it's a gap is or gap phase. We also kind of, uh, looked at some of the uh, defining properties of the gap splitting. So one of them is that from the solution of the exact model, we know that the, uh, uh, that the gap in the exploration X is expected to uh, scale uh, as a cube of the field. So here we uh, uh, plot now the, the correlation X, and we see that this is, uh, converges to the, or excuse me, it's possible that it's both as, uh, as a cube of the field. And you see here that as we if we go to the regime of very small fields, the differentiation of our method is rather big. Even for many states that we keep in our simulations, we are not uh, converged to the exact design. So that is possible that it converges to this design. Another thing that we check for is actually the existence of uh, uh, non really manuals. So one of the characterizing properties of this Gap type building grid is that it uh, contains uh, diverse marijuana fermions. The way to detect them is to actually look at the um, uh, topological entanglement entropy. So these are corrections to the area law entanglement. And uh, there's a subtle relationship between the topological entanglement and the so called uh, quantum dimension of these anions. Particularly, we know that the quantum dimension for marijuana anions is the uh, square root of 2. So in, uh, in fact, by comparing the DMIG entanglement that we get to the local contributions to the entanglement, we actually do find exactly this uh, 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 quantum dimension of log 2 that we expect from the topological um, uh, uh, field, which is nice. So, that much about the um, ground state of static properties. So now we can again use a similar approach to study the dynamic resistance structure factor. We first look at, uh, so we start from, so, so, this, so, so we start here from the uh, 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 the high point that had of small fields, and we see that here that there's a, uh, a small gap, which is hardly visible here, but it's there. And uh, then we have the peak, and basically this is now exactly similar to the exact solution um, of the type model, the pure type model. Now we can now gradually increase the field. Then we find that this, this gap is, uh, is, is, is decreasing. We can now directly compare it to the exact solution of the uh, uh, effective uh, model of the case weaker. We see that there's certain similarities, but also differences in particular. If you look very closely, you see that there's also dispersion. Of this uh, uh, peak here, which is completely gaining in the effective model. This are uh, still to the flux excitation. Well, then we can increase it, and at some point we jump into the power uh, uh, phase where we see now the uh, magma excitation. So we can just basically now trace the excitation And then in the last minute, I just want to briefly just uh, show that we can now use the same method also on models that we have already looked at for a very long time. This is, for example, the uh, uh, um, Heidelberg model on a square lattice. And again, I don't have enough time to go through many details, but we do see the closed uh, modes here. And we also see, and this is quite nice, that uh, we have this like, special line um, um, uh, here where, where the uh, spin wave, where spin wave regulation is predicted to completely flat uh, uh, no expression at all, but we will be actually with, uh, we find this uh, expression, and then we can actually look at uh, 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 the different properties of this uh, anomalous uh, mode and compare to various methods that have been uh, used before. And, uh, 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 and, uh, and moreover, we find that like, results that are rather close to what's been from very recent quantum uh, policy So, uh, with this.
I want to um, conclude. So I hope that I can convince you that the uh, PMLG method is quite powerful tool to extract dynamic information from our two dimensional skill systems. Perhaps there's some, I'm sure, some device probably the higher model, which was done by Matthias uh, Wood and Wood Grayson. I looked at the uh, high model uh, in the magnetic field, showing this immediate phase. And then I get a quick glimpse at, uh, that we can now look at um, old problems um, with the method. And then we also advertise that we, we are starting to make this uh, code uh, open source, and uh, this can be found on, on GitHub. It doesn't have the dynamic repository yet, but for the ground state, uh, it is already uh, online. Okay, so uh, thank you for your.
Did you get the feel for thermodynamic and The second row 